We're here in Montreal, Quebec at the TriStar gym with, gym with UFC lightweight Mark Bocek getting prepared for UFC 154 where he will be in action against Rafael Dos Anjos. And Mark, have you been spending a lot of your time here at TriStar? Uh, where, where have you been preparing for this one? Yeah, I've been here. I've had done my last two fights here. Um, I've been coming here uh, on and off for the past uh, about 10 to 12 weeks or so. I've been here about uh, three, four weeks straight, and I'll be here straight through to my fight. What has it been like uh, kind of here at the, at the center of all of this media attention that a, a George St. Pierre fight kind of commands with the primetime cameras and all of that? Has that been uh, something different? Because you, you've trained at a lot of high-level camps where there is a, a lot of spotlight, but with George St. Pierre fighting in Canada, uh, it's kind of a different beast. Yeah, it's a big pressure fight, um, and October was really crazy. I mean, he's, uh, he's pulled out all the stops, he's prepared, he's brought in a lot of people to come train with him, so there's a lot of deep talent in the room, as much as I've ever seen at a gym before in my life. Um, so October was pretty crazy, um, still doing the finishing touches, but uh, yeah, that's going to be a big pressure fight. Uh, I'm on the undercard, so... Uh, you know, I'll have my popcorn in time for that one. There you go. Well, you are involved in a very interesting fight with uh, Dos Anjos, and 155 might be the deepest division right now inside the UFC. You are coming off two very big wins, especially with a guy like Nick Lentz, that uh, a very, very tough out. Um, at this point right now, getting a win over Dos Anjos, I mean, uh, you're kind of at the, this stage, I think, where you're starting to become a real threat at 155 for a lot of people, but there's just so many name, names to navigate in that division. It's an extremely deep division, but um, you know we all know how it is now. Uh, I'm coming off a win, and you know from the main card, and I'm back to the undercard. So does that frustrate you a little? It has to a little bit, yeah, because now it's harder to get the bigger, better sponsors. So with the way things are and what the sport really turned into, uh, now I just look at it one at a time. You know, uh, I don't look too far down the road. Yeah, sure, I guess a win throws me in the top ten, but. Um, any, anything can happen here, um, so I'm just uh, I'm just focused on Dosanya. Just focused on getting the win here. You mentioned there what the sport has become. Can you elaborate a bit of a kind of just from a fighter's perspective, your observations on what changes ha have occurred within the sport, maybe over the past year or plus? Uh, sure, it's uh, it's you know it's a it's a huge business, big business. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, you know a lot of politics. Um, Nobody wants to see two people that like each other fight each other. People want to see a hype fight. People want to see, you know, some, some talk, some hype, some, some build-up. They want to see some uh, entertainment along with the fight. And I get that. I understand that. But most of these guys, the talented guys, are just, they're just fighters. They're not all like Chael Sonnens, who's done a great job of marketing himself. But, uh, you know, you see a lot of guys now, you know, who come off, come off losses that are, are getting main card slots where uh, winners are not. Uh, looking ahead to uh, Rafael Dos Anjos here, uh, what are some of the, the key aspects here preparing for a fighter uh, like Dos Anjos that you've been able to kind of uh, ascertain from watching some of his fights? Yeah, he's a tough, tough opponent. I've, uh, I've studied all his UFC fights. Uh, he's primarily a BJJ guy, but he's shown a uh, nice evolution in his striking and wrestling. Um, but he still uses uh, striking and wrestling to get into his, his comfort zone, to get into uh, jiu-jitsu and grappling situations. He's on a two-fight win streak, uh, like myself. Um, it's, a, it's a tough fight, um, but, I, but I think I have the edge in the, in the wrestling and jiu-jitsu. And uh, I've been training hard. I have a lot of, uh, of southpaws to work with here. Um, so I'm, I'm prepared. I'm confident for this fight. It's a tough test, but I'll be ready. As a lightweight yourself, I'm curious, uh, a very uh, heated uh, debate coming out of the Benson Henderson, Frank Edgar, their second fight back at UFC 150. Uh, who did you feel uh, won that fight? I am uh, one of the people that I gave both fights very narrowly uh, to Frankie Edgar. Close fight. Um, the, I thought the first fight was a way better fight. Um, I, th I thought the first fight uh, Benson won. I just thought he clearly, uh, clearly did more damage and uh, Frankie didn't stabilize the takedowns. The second one uh, was really razor thin, uh, but watching it, I did think, uh, I did think Frankie did enough with the, with the takedowns to win. I, th I thought he was going to get his arm raised, but, uh, but he didn't. Either way, it was a close fight, um, but you know, thought Frankie won, but you know, we know how the judges are. Now, my final question here, which uh, I would have to ask here, there's a very, very popular video with our cameraman, Wei Ting, and you online for an edition of The Way in uh, discussing Wu-Tang, and the RZA is making his directorial debut coming up with The Man with the Iron Fists. A, uh, what do you think about the RZA moving over to, to movies, and will you be going to watch this? Also featuring Kung Lee and uh, newly minted MMA fighter Dave Batista. 
yeah, I've I've seen the trailers. It looks pretty uh, pretty interesting. It's uh, it's very cool that Rizzo's transitioning into uh, into uh, directing now. Um, looks like an interesting plot, and uh, I will definitely check it out. And maybe over your post-fight interview with Joe Rogan, you drop some Wu Tang lyrics, <laughs> and that is going to get some people talking about Mark Bocek and putting him near the top of the 155 picture. Maybe that is the missing ingredient, Mark. Yeah, there's, there, it, it just might come to that, but there definitely is a missing ingredient, so we'll see what happens. Well, coming up Saturday, November the 17th, Mark Bocek ain't nobody to F with, and he is going to be taking on Rafael Dos Anjos. Is that not great? I think that's fantastic, and I think that we, we should repeat that at the post-fight interview, Mark. We look forward to seeing you Saturday, November 17th. Sounds good. Thank you.